There are two questions that every human being from every place and every time has asked, regardless of race, ethnicity, geography, history, age, or economic or social status. Every person deals with these two questions. Will someone love me? And will that love make a difference? To feel unloved is to feel utterly alone. And that's devastating to our psyches and our souls. We all need to feel like someone has our back, that someone is on our side. Now, I'm not talking about romance here. I'm talking about a love that reaches to the heights and depths of the human condition. The highest human joys are connected to love. The deepest human fears are linked to love. The unceasing longing of every human being has to do with love and its effect. No one has ever had to teach an infant to want to be loved or to cry when they feel unloved. Babies who are deprived of loving human touch often failure to, fail to thrive. They lose weight and can even die. Children who don't get touched have lower levels of growth hormone, so the lack of a loving touch can actually stunt a child's growth. There is no emotion, no experience, and no quest more authentically human than love. We need to know a love that makes a difference. We need to know a love that allows for forgiveness. We need to know a love that says we're not alone in our struggles. We need to know a love that tells us our lives aren't irreparably broken. We need to know a love that shows us the world isn't spinning out of control. I need to know that someone loves me and that that love makes a difference. But in this fallen world, love is a rough and rocky road. Familial love often fails us in some way. Marital love, with all its romantic hopes and dreams, never quite lives up to our fantasies. Even forever friendships often fade over time. And yet, there is a love that speaks to the deepest hunger of the human heart. There is a love that will never forsake us. There is a love that will see us through every struggle. There is a love that is so strong that nothing in all of creation can break it. It's the sacrificial, patient, forgiving and faithful love of God. Only God has the ability to offer the peace-producing, joy-fulfilling, and heart-resting love for which we all long. It's the love of God that has the power to overcome hatred, to bring about justice, and to turn scars into beauty marks. That's the love for which we long. That's the love that answers the question, am I loved and will it make a difference? And that's the love presented in our scripture lesson today from the prophet Isaiah. The people of ancient Israel to whom Isaiah wrote were not that much different from us today. 
They had their good times and their bad times. Like us, they had times when they felt the love of God close to them and other times when they felt devoid of love and far away from God. During the days of Isaiah, things were so bad for the people of Israel that they believed that God had left them and had gone far, far away. And yet, they longed for God to come near them again, even if it meant that the mountains would tremble and the earth would quake. Their hearts ached to feel the presence of God. And so, like the announcer on the popular TV game show, The Price is Right, Isaiah shouts, God, come on down. Isaiah knew that even if it meant facing God's anger, it was better to be with God than to be without God. So let's take a look at this passage found in Isaiah chapter 64. Would you read with me? I wish you would open up your heavens and come down to us. I wish the mountains would tremble when you show your power. Be like a fire that causes twigs to burn and makes water boil. So come down and make yourself known to all people. Cause the nations to shake with fear when they see your power. Long ago, you did some wonderful things we didn't expect. You came down. And the mountains trembled when you showed your power. No one's ears have ever heard of a God like you. No one's eyes have ever seen a God who is greater than you. No God but you acts for the good of those who trust in him. You come to help those who enjoy doing what is right. You help those who thank you for teaching them how to live. Don't be so angry with us, Lord. Don't remember our sins anymore. Please have mercy on us. All of us belong to you. Like Isaiah, like the people of Israel, we long to feel God's presence. We long for those mountaintop experiences. We long for God to break open the heavens and come to us so that we can feel God's arm around our shoulders, so that we can hear God actually speak to us, so that we can know that God is as close as our own heartbeat. Some of us have had those mountaintop experiences. But it's hard to stay on the mountain. Life seems to intrude on our private audience with the Creator. We get distracted. And before long, that intimate experience of God is only a memory. And unless we can recreate that feeling, we worry that God has somehow become distracted God's self. Perhaps even have left us. We feel the difference. We recognize the distance because we felt the nearness. Isaiah remembered the nearness. He remembered how God had worked in the past, and he mourned over the gap that now existed between God and Israel. He cried, Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down. And that's exactly what God did at Christmas. At Christmas... God tore open the heavens and came to us. 
maybe not in the way Isaiah expected, but with an angelic chorus that burst forth into song at the birth of the Christ child. Think about it this way. It's like the grandma who found her grandson in his playpen jumping up and down and crying at the top of his lungs when little Johnny saw his grandma. He reached out his chubby little hands and said, Out, Gigi, out! So like any grandma would do, she reached down to lift her grandson out of his predicament. But as she did, Johnny's mom stepped up and said, No, Johnny, you're in time out. You have to stay in your playpen. Well, what's grandma to do? Her grandson's tears reached deep into her heart, but his mother's firmness could not be taken lightly. Nevertheless, love found a way. Grandma couldn't take her grandson out of the playpen, so instead, she climbed in to be with the boy. At Christmas, the Son of God left heaven for earth and climbed into the playpen with us. God came down. The Word was made flesh. God in Christ moved into our neighborhood. No longer do we have to wonder if we'll be loved or if that love will make a difference. Through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, we know that God came to us, not in judgment, but in love. In Jesus, we can know that we're loved. In Jesus, we can know we're forgiven. In Jesus, we can know that we're not alone in our struggles. In Jesus, we can know that our lives aren't irreparably broken. In Jesus, I know someone loves me and that this love makes a difference. At Christmas, heaven came to earth in Jesus. God tore open the heavens and came to be with us. But maybe you're here this morning and you don't know what that love feels like. Maybe you've never felt it or maybe you did once but it seems like a long time ago. Maybe Instead of love, the only thing you feel is empty. Well, I have good news for you. God's love is not dependent on your feelings. The fact that God loves you is not dependent on how you feel. Whether you feel it or not, God loves you. Whether you feel it or not, Jesus has come to be with you. Whether you feel it or not, you are offered a life of love, of joy, of peace. Love came down at Christmas. Heaven came to earth in Jesus. So if you're struggling this morning with what seems like an impossible gap between earth and heaven. Invite Jesus to come down, to climb into the playpen with you, and to make a home in your heart.